Now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two, hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Let's get right into it. We have a promo meeting for our day job right at six. I don't have all the time in the world. Pharaoh, how the hell are you? Man, I've been good. It's been a good vibe. And of course, we're back here at Ryan Hoppy Radio and I'm, I'm turned. Dude, so it was about 10 days ago, so I'm not saying the excitement's gone, but I, I, I do want to recap the pool party. Uh, I have never seen so much twerking in my life, bro. It was unbelievable. To be honest, I feel like you missed the highlight, which was at night. Everybody was in the backyard, in the, in the, in the left side where all the VIPs were, and that thing was a movie. Everybody was together singing some good old Kodak Black. The vibes were amazing. The Hennessy was pouring down people's throats. The champagnes were being sprayed in girls' asses. I just, it was so magical. Dude, I had to leave. Um, I drove. So I don't turn up that hard when I drive because the Uber was like 35 bucks to get there. So I uh, I had to be cautious, but I did have a good time. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Um, I want to get right into it. I've said I've said that twice, so we're gonna get right into it. I'm done. I, I'm sick and tired of the rich and elite thinking that because they are the rich and elite, they can get away with anything. You are nothing more than another human being on this planet that takes a dump every morning and that is going to die someday. Just because you have money in your bank account doesn't mean you can get away with things. I, I I'm done. I, I'm over it. It's literally getting on my nerves. First of all, we'll talk about it later, but Todd Chrisley from that show, Chrisley Knows Best, those rich people that did tax fraud, they're getting a lighter sentence. If I were to do tax fraud or if you were to do tax fraud, you would not get a lighter sentence. Yeah, that's just uh, corporate America at its finest. And it's just sad because it's just so unmotivating because I wake up every day. We wake up every day because I like to say that I record this show for the hardworking average Joe that grinds in life and Jane that grinds in life. And we're getting fucked, okay? We're getting absolutely fucked. Inflation's through the roof. And then you have Ashton Kutcher and his washed-up wife, Mila Kunis, defending Danny Masterson, who fucking raped women. I don't care that it was 20 years ago. Everyone's like, it was 20 years ago. So... So if you rape a woman and you don't get in trouble for 20 years, it didn't happen. And then the church of Scientology, that fucking cult, defended it. It's ridiculous. And then you have people out there that are saying, oh, because I was friends with him on the set of uh, That 70s Show, that he's a really cool dude. I've worked with a lot of people on radio, and you can be the nicest person. You can be out to dinner and you're charming. But then you find out that they do things in their personal life. Raping a woman, cheating on their wife, shoving women to the ground. You can do whatever you want because they're rich and elite and they can get away with it. But then don't come crying to us when you're in the middle of your life and no one wants to be around you. All these assholes, Pharaoh, do all these shitty things throughout their 20s and 30s and then wonder why no one wants to be around them. And then wonder why they're getting 30 years in jail for prison because you raped somebody. I, I'm so confused. Everyone's like, oh, Danny Masterson was so good on that 70s show. Have you seen that 70s show? Of course. That was probably- He's not funny. He was the worst part of it. I didn't like him growing up. I thought he was terrible. <laughs> I mean, that 70s show was definitely, uh, it, it grew up a lot of people. It was it was definitely a show that, you know, uh, embraced a lot of people's um, teenager years. But I definitely agree with you. Just because you have money, you have uh, fame, and, and, you know, you have a lot of powerful friends like Ashton and Mila, does not mean that you're exempt of the rules of the law. So they wrote some letters to the judge, and the letters got out, and they're mad about it. You're some of the most famous people of all time. I know that's unfair 
to say that the information is going to get out. But but it's going to get out. You're famous. I'm sorry. When you're writing a letter defending a fucking rapist, it's going to get out. It's going to get out. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims. Or- you are undermining the testimony when you're defending a rapist. What are you undermining? If you're not undermining it, you would accept that your scumbag friend raped two women and is going to jail for 30 years. But you are undermining it when you're literally saying, oh, my, my friend was good on a TV show and we got drunk together and did coke. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And no one wants to say it. You have people going on Good Morning America and the Today Show defending it or uh, saying that it's bad. But I want to be the voice of this generation where I call this bullshit out. People think just because you have money in your bank account, you can do what you want. No. You know those women are probably traumatized for life. I I got to be careful how I, say, how I say this. I've dated people in my past who have been raped. And you got to treat them tenderly with love. That shit affects them for life. People don't want to think about rape. People don't want to think about pedophiles. Because when you process what they're doing, it fucks with your mind. But you are taking advantage of somebody and giving them the, the you're forcing upon yourself this act that is so intimate. And you're traumatizing them forever. But oh, he was so funny in that 70s show. No, he wasn't. He was creepy on that as well. It was Fez and it was Ashton's character that were funny. And Mila and the dad and even Topher Grace's character was funny because he was a dork with the redheaded girl. But Hyde was never funny. And what has he done since then? Rape women. Tell me something Danny Masterson's contributed to besides being in a cult and raping women. He was not that good on that show. He was good at being the creepy friend in the 70s. Fuck you. All right, so definitely, man, look, shout out to Fez because Fez definitely was. Fez was the best. <laughs> Fez was. He was so good. <laughs> Fez was definitely like what kept the show hanging. But, yeah. But let's 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 dig Tell a little me. bit deeper into the situation. Do you agree? Yes. Well, I know. Let me let me kind of like step back. I have not seen the women publicly. You know, say these statements. I didn't even, to be honest, if this would have never came out on on ET, on TMZ, and all the high media outlets, yes. I would have never known this man was going to jail for raping two women. Do it's, you do you think, as a male in twenty twenty three, yes, you know, modern day America, do you think there's a small possibility these women could be after some money? No, I think it is dangerous. Women say they are so scared to come out and talk about rape. And I think they're keeping them anonymous to protect them. Look at Danny Masterson. He carries himself like an asswipe. He's ugly. He's I don't believe in any like demons or God or anything, but he's got demonic, creepy vibes. I do think, uh, like, how do I word this? During the Me Too movement, it was beautiful because it gave women rights, but I do think... Some of the people that may have came forward were looking for money, but I don't think in this case that's it. I do think that happens. Not all the time, and you never know, but the the allegations of this guy, man, I couldn't even finish it. But I do think a lot of times when you try to cancel somebody, some people are for cloud chasers, especially if it's a basketball player or somebody with money. It's, it's just... You wake up every day and you hope for the best and you grind and then you just see these ass wipes defending it. We traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. You're not sorry. You're just mad that the the fucking letters got out. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis issuing an apology after writing letters in support of Danny Masterson ahead of his rape case sentencing. The couple shared a video to Instagram Saturday after facing high public criticism over the letters for their former That 70s Show co-star, in which they called him a, quote, role model with exceptional character. If he's a role model with exceptional character, I don't want to be a role model and I don't want to have exceptional character. Whatever he's done in his life, I want to be the opposite. 
I want to be a scumbag with no character. If you're telling me that he's a role model, dude, actors are so creepy. I know somebody who's an actor and he'll sometimes pull pranks on me and I think it's serious. They know how to turn on that face, bro. They know how to turn it. It's frightening. I don't think I could ever date an actress because I don't know. I mean, I have before <laughs> uh, because she was acting the whole time for a cloud. Uh, what I'm saying, though, is only fans I- doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget at the end of the last relationship that was like, hey, is it cool if I do feed videos on only fans? I was like, oh, I think we should break up. Written in hopes of persuading the Los Angeles Superior Court judge to show mercy to the disgraced actor. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters. To so if you're going to write character letters, right, my friend, we had a lot of good times. We did a lot of cocaine. We had a lot of sex with women, but he's a piece of garbage. That's his character. And if you're going to write a character letter, you should include all the funny one-liners, which would be an empty paper from Hyde's time on uh, that 70s show. Character letters. It's a disgrace because in the 2010s, I thought they made movements with the Me Too movement, like canceling Harvey Weinstein and all the people in Hollywood that took advantage of women. And then you have this. And it feels like it's taking things back. The same thing with that country music singer making that song, uh, Don't Do This in a Small Town. Again, it's like we're taking step, steps back. And then we have a president for the first time ever in 22 years didn't go to New York City for 9-11. Biden's in Alaska taking a step back. It's $10 to get a hamburger helper meal. Taking a step back. Everything's taping, taking a step back. This planet doesn't, we don't deserve this planet, bro. We just shit on this planet all the time. We think we're going to live forever. We think we matter, and we really don't. We're just little specks in the universe. It's insane, dude. Our egos as humans, I had it in my 20s. I don't know what happened turning 30. We don't matter. All you got to do is show up to work, try your hardest, grind, and be nice to people. Pharaoh. If you were to be accused of rape and you were found guilty, I wouldn't talk to you anymore. I just would not. I love you like a brother. You're one of my closest friends. You are a G. You motivate me. Our phone conversations are cool, but you'd be done. Anybody would be done. My mom would be done. I don't want to associate with someone that takes... Ridiculous. But he was good at that 70s show. No, he wasn't. Represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. You didn't know him because he's not going to try to rape you. You're his friend and she's your wife. I've been around people that cheat on their wife all the time and do shitty things. They're not going to act like that at a gala, Pharaoh. Do you ever see whenever like a public figure that everybody knows is a scumbag? But they're out at their like charity event or whatever. And they're not acting like that because that's their side life. Ashton never saw that because he's not going to rape Ashton. I mean, I wouldn't put it against him because he's a creep. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, what I, are we doing? No, I definitely feel like, and you kind of brought up a great point. Thanks. Uh, I don't know if you knew, but if when boxers start to begin a fight, after the third fight, it's illegal for them to fight in the streets. That's how it should be with actors. After your third movie, after your third episode, you're so good at acting, you're no longer allowed to like have the same rules that a normal person would have because who knows if these people are lying, you know? Dude, the other day, my friend was telling me, and I know he's going to probably listen to, to this high, but he was like, yo, this girl we know, she got pregnant, and his face was dead serious. And then an hour later, he was like, oh, I'm just kidding. And I was like, those people are dangerous. It was frightening. And I know my friend's listening because I adore him, but it was frightening. And I love this guy like a brother. He's one of my closest friends. But I was like, damn, you pulled that prank on me because he, he's done stage work. He, I think he's even been in movies and he was able to like turn it on. I'm like, you scaring me. 
While they explain why they participated in written defense of Danny, Ashton and Mila go on to clarify their intentions behind it. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial yeah, they were. system or the validity of the jury's ruling. You know what I hate about Mila Kunis is everything. Also, she's so pretty, but I love how in this video she's purposely looking ugly. So she's like, oh my God, I'm so affected by this. Yeah, she was definitely one of my <laughs> celebrity crushes. Even since, yeah. like, just the clip that they showed from the 70s show. She was just such a baddie, a- bro. Jackie was beautiful. Yeah, she was definitely eye candy since young. And um, definitely, you know, throughout the years and the movies, she's definitely, you know, um, Ameri- aged. Ameri- I mean, she's definitely aged, but she's still America's sweetheart. She is. She looks good in those tequila commercials. Yeah. I'm like, oh, let's drink tequila together. I'll lay, I'll lay the pipe better than Ashton. I don't see him being a passionate lover. I see him being like, do all the work. I'm not doing anything. He doesn't seem like a lover. Why? Because he's defending a rapist. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never- <sighs> Assholes. Assholes. You know who else is an asshole? Do you know much about Jimmy Fallon? You know Jimmy Fallon, right? Of course. You ever uh, watched The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon? I watched a couple episodes here and there. Okay, so I grew up, my mom was a huge David Letterman fan. I personally didn't mind Jay Leno. I liked Craig Ferguson. I didn't have cable growing up. So the only way for me to consume entertainment was CBS, which we barely got on the uh, bunny ears. You know how, like, if you didn't have cable, you had the antennas? Mm -hmm. We barely got CBS. So we got NBC, Fox, ABC, all the networks. You get the point. So growing up, I liked watching Jimmy Kimmel in his prime. I liked watching this. I liked watching that. And I'm going to tell you right now that Jimmy Fallon is a disgrace to the late night format. All he does is fake laugh at all his friends that come on the show. (laughs) Dude, can you do a legitimate interview? the hell are you doing you ever watch it where he'll have like um let's say justin bieber on and justin will be like i was talking to Haley last night and we got into an argument and then you'll have uh, jimmy fallon <laughs> so what are you laughing at you cokehead and then you find out he's got a drinking problem and he's being an asswipe in public at bars and that but here's the best part can you believe that somebody that would have a fake laugh and a fake personality can you believe that there would be a toxic workplace environment can you believe that i could definitely believe that so so what's going on today <laughs> i loved how i'm being dramatic and then you brought it back to me that's why you're here man you're the best 856 49 happy Efforts at damage control are on over at The Tonight Show after a devastating article claimed that host Jimmy Fallon has created a toxic workplace. Just hours after the article hit Rolling Stone magazine, Fallon was on Zoom with his staff. Amber Cagliano reports. Jimmy Fallon is apologizing following reports about toxic working conditions at the iconic Tonight Show. It's embarrassing, and I feel so bad. Sorry if I embarrassed you and your family and friends. Oh, that sounds so legitimate and genuine. By the way, why are you saying sorry now that you got caught? If he really felt bad, he would have said sorry beforehand. He would have gone on up. It was like when David Letterman got caught cheating 15 years ago, and he had that heartfelt thing, even though he got caught. If if Jimmy Fallon really believed it, he would go up there and say, hey, I've been really bad to my coworkers, and I'm sorry. But Pharaoh. It literally took him getting caught for that to happen. I feel like if you're sorry in that caliber of structure of a show, you need to pop some money. You know, like be sorry with a couple of checks that have a lot of zeros. And I'm pretty sure everybody's going to go home, give their family and friends some some things and everybody sleeps well. Fallon was quoted as saying during an emergency Zoom call for the staff. I feel so bad, I can't even tell you. I want this show to be fun. It should be inclusive for everybody. If it's going to be fun, you wouldn't be there. The apology comes following a bombshell Rolling Stone magazine expose. 
Rolling Stone magazine claims that behind the scenes at The Tonight Show, there were complaints about Jimmy Fallon's erratic behavior, mood swings, and hissy fits. Some former employees even claimed there were so-called crying rooms where staffers would sit and weep. Others claimed their hair was thinning and even suicidal thoughts due to the stress of working for Fallon. Man, what do you think of that? Well... <laughs> Okay. Tell me. I want to hear you. Let me kind of just, just pitch it back to you. Let me throw the ball back at you. Yeah, I want to hear this. You, as a professional radio host, how do you feel about having the quality of your show being jeopardized over other people? Do you feel that's something that Jimmy was feeling at the moment and that was going on with the situation? Okay. I do think that he is an asswipe to work with. And not a good friend and not somebody I would want to work with. But on this show, I play the news clips live on the show and I don't listen to it beforehand because I want to hear all the information with you guys for the first time. A crying room is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Go cry in your car. I've cried over my job before. I'm not going to lie. A crying room. That's the most Gen Z thing ever. Again, I'm sure Jimmy Fallon is horrendous to work with, but if you're in a crying room, that's where, I, listen, I call it like it is and I say it like it is. That is the wussification of America. Again, if there was an opening for The Tonight Show, I probably wouldn't take it unless I had some power. Uh, I probably would take it. But what I'm saying is he doesn't seem fun, man, but deal with it. I'm glad he got called out. I'm glad that I don't like the guy at all. But at the same time, all these things they just said, come on, man, grow up a little bit. You're in the entertainment business. They're scumbags. Your hair is thinning. Your hair is thinning because you're getting older. No. Your hair is not thinning because if, if Jimmy Fallon is the reason your hair is thinning, a job where they would replace you tomorrow or NBC could cancel the show. If you stress that much over your job, you're not living life right. If you have enough time to go with other coworkers to a crying room, that means you have time to go to the Coke room. And that's what they're doing over there. Called crying rooms where staffers would sit and weep. Others claimed their hair was thinning and even suicidal thoughts due to the. All right, I'm not going to comment about the suicidal thoughts because I've never had one, but I've been to some really dark places. So that's different. But I'll tell you right now, your hair thinning has nothing to do with. It's the entertainment business. Again, glad he got called out. Scumbag. I get it. But to, like, be that much of a victim? Come on, man. The stress of working for Fallon. Hello, everyone. Fallon was in London yesterday, but returned to New York to deal with the crisis. I heard you recently had a birthday. I, I no. Now comedian Jerry Seinfeld is coming to Fallon's defense after the magazine reported that during the taping of this segment, Fallon chewed out a staffer who made a mistake on his interview notes. Well, that's not good. Um, by the way, of course, Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> is going to defend Jimmy Fallon. Jerry Seinfeld's another asshole. Everybody that's ever met him says he's not a nice guy. So people that aren't nice are going to defend other people that aren't nice, Pharaoh. That, that's what I'm sick of. I'm sick of when these people like Ellen DeGeneres or Howard Stern or Jimmy Fallon or Wendy Williams... All the people and the people on ESPN I've heard are hard to work with. I hate when, like, they get in trouble for being scumbags and then their other scumbag friends defend them. And it's like, of course you're going to defend them. Like, where's the voice in Hollywood that goes, no, yes, you're being wimps by having a crying room, but at the same time, this or that. But I mean, I feel like it's a uh, double-edged sword because... In Jimmy's situation, if they're saying that he he roasted, he roasted one of the workers because they messed up on his lines, that's something that in show business it cannot happen. So, if he does make a mistake, everybody's gonna take shots at Jimmy, not the co-worker. So he's definitely looking at it like, 
any mistake that happens in this show, it's called the Jimmy Fallon show. It's not the yeah. whatever the you know. So it's it's kind of like that fifty fifty line where it's like okay. You can't expect people to be perfect 100%, but if you're getting paid the amount of money to be perfectionist, you should be having that perfect. It's like you need to have, it seems like people are scared to work with Jimmy. There's something going on with this environment where if they're messing up, that's because they're walking on eggshells. So Jimmy Fallon should definitely go about things more maturely. But man, if you're just messing up, of course he's going to be mad. He's on NBC. The network that's nothing but crap. <laughs> Get it. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. I heard that you, uh, that you had a burglary. I didn't. I did not. No. <laughs> this is no. bizarre. Yeah, it's Piece weird. of paper, you, yeah. Maybe this is for the next stuff, guest. <laughs> oh, that's bad. That's bad! You see? That's bad! Wow. But Supposedly, that, behind the scenes, Seinfeld made Fallon apologize to the low-level staffer. But today, Seinfeld is calling Rolling Stone's version an idiotic twisting of events. Reports of out-of-control drinking have dogged Fallon for years. Oh, I'm your host, Trippy Fallon. In 2015, he nearly lost his finger during an unexplained fall at home. <laughs> I love when the rich and elite do something where they like get really effed up. I love how I said fuck like a hundred times on here and now I'm being effed up. I love when they fuck up and then they're embarrassed to say, yeah, I fell off the roof of my house or something. And then they, they say this. He showed the injury to Deborah on the Emmy Awards red carpet. But it's getting better. It's a lot of physical therapy now and just all about getting better now. You know? That's going to suck. Hopefully it's not his right hand. I don't know what I, if I lost my right hand, bro, I don't know. I, my left hand's not very strong. If you get what I'm saying, the late nights, you're sitting alone at your house. You need some pleasure. I, uh, that's actually a scary thought to lose your right hand. I feel like to lose anything overall would be weird. You know, it could be a left toe. It's always going to be traumatic. Now, you know about the writer's strikes. I do, I do. It says here, Drew Barrymore defends her talk show beginning production amid writer strikes. I'm indifferent. I get that she's got a show to do, but it's not like she's some up and coming production where she needs the money. If she had any integrity, she would defend her staff. Before I play the clip, what's your angle on it? My angle on it is, I definitely agree with you. You have the money. You have the clout. She's one of the richest women ever, probably. Exactly. Uh, definitely uh, one of the angels, right? The, yeah, defend your team. <sighs> All right, let's find out. Drew Barrymore is standing by her decision to start filming the new season of The Drew Barrymore Show amid the Writers Guild of America strike. Back in May, when the WGA initiated their strike, the 48-year-old actress was among the first to stand in solidarity with the striking writers by stepping away from hosting the MTV Movie and TV Awards. But on Sunday, Drew took to her Instagram to announce why she would be resuming production on the fourth season of her famous talk show, without writers it seems, penning in a lengthy post. I made a choice to walk away from the MTV Film and Television Awards because I was the host and it had a direct conflict with what the strike was dealing with, which was studios, streamers, film, and television. It was also in the first week of the strike, and so I did what I thought was the appropriate thing at the time to stand in solidarity with the writers. You did it at the time because you wanted to look good. You didn't care. If you cared, you would be with your team now. And that's probably why they're on strike. It's because underlings in the entertainment business, they're the ones doing all the work. She probably just shows up like Jimmy Fallon had with that information that was wrong. She probably just shows up and does the show. What I'm sick and tired of in the entertainment business, if it's being on the promotions team or if it's being a writer or whatever, is you do all the work. And if one thing goes wrong, everything gets blamed on you. But if the workload's not fair, there's going to be human error. It's unbelievable. Exactly. Especially when there's a big space in the bracket of the money you know um yes sir you, you, you brought up you know from being a mcdonald's worker 
to being in the promotions team to being a big time writer for the biggest Netflix shows. They give the work, they, they give the hardest work to the people who have the most important job and they do not pay them well. It's insane. And to be clear, our talk show actually wrapped on April 20th, so we never had to shut down the show. However, I'm also making the choice to come back for the first time in the strike for our show. That may have my name on it, but this is bigger than just me. Sponsors have to be tripping. That's got to be what it is if you say it's bigger than just me. But again, again, you're so rich. What I hate about rich people, because we're going to, we're rich in abundance, but when, when we have tons of money in our bank account, I'm not going to like donate all of it because you got to keep it, but I'm not going to be like afraid to help out others. I feel like they have this weird ego, the rich and elite, where they like looking at their bank account and it says like 30 million and they don't want it to say twenty nine million four hundred thousand and two dollars Like, I feel like there's something where, like, because, like, Howard Stern did it. One of his people on his team, his wife had cancer, and he created a GoFundMe. Scott, the engineer, did to promote his wife's cancer, and Howard didn't promote it on air or donate. And he's got, like, $800 million. It's like him, Jeff Bezos, all these guys just... They want to hold on to their money. You can't bring it with you when you die. And if you... Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. And then these guys that have all the money, that that have the me, me, me attitude, they wonder why no one wants to be with them at the end of their life. You listen to Howard Stern complain about life all the time. Because even though you were talented, you treated people badly. The same thing's going to happen with Drew Barrymore. Same thing's going to happen with Fallon. At the end of their life, when they're sitting in their mansion, they're going to look back and go, man, we should have treated people better. I've seen it in radio. Not people I've even worked with, but just people get to the top of their game. And then they crash, and then they're like, what's wrong? It's like, you didn't treat anybody well. I'm not saying you have to be overly nice to people. You can be kind of a dick because you got to command a room. But you got to be nice enough to like say, hi, how's it going? Come on, man. Just simple human being human, vibes. Yes. That's just pretty much it. And, you know, that's what pretty much money does. It starts destroying people from the inside. And um, I was talking about this the other day um, and, and just kind of agreeing with your point. A lot of people get to the top of their game. They forget where they came from. They let the money kind of cloud their judgment on who they are. And they forget at the end of the day, once you leave the, the place where you're making the money at, you're just a norm, an, another normal human being, and it doesn't make you any better just because your bank account has more zeros than the person right next to you. Speaking of that mindset, and we're going to give you the phone number, 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. At least Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon have somewhat of talent, and they need their money or whatever. Kevin Costner's ex-wife Christine has a request for 885,000 in attorney fees. Whoa. She already was asking for all this money in alimony. This talentless loser needs to get a job. She needs to create a company or something. I love, and this is not me being sexist. This just goes with the facts because I can't really speak on gay couples, but I don't think this happens in gay marriages. I love when these trophy wives that base everything off of their youth and age but have no personality and marry an older guy and then that older guy has a reputation for only wanting to date younger women and it's not fair but when they get older they get replaced. If he has previous behavior of being married multiple times, someone like Larry King back in the day, you're going to get replaced. You got to be ready for that. They think it's going to last forever but if why would, Ke- and this sounds so sexist, because I do believe in true love in a way. Like, I wouldn't mind being with somebody for 50 years. I don't know. I'm not the type of person where I would replace somebody because they got too old. But there's plenty of men that do that. And if they have a previous past of being in all these relationships, or they're famous and they can get whoever they want, I'm sorry. 
It's like radio or TV. It's literally an entertainment business relationship. It's not a normal relationship. Yeah, it definitely has to be mutual at that point. And, you know, I think women who try to attract these uh, these rich men who have power, who have these uh, positions of, of power, forget that when they get older, they could do whatever the hell they want. It's easier when a man turns 50, 60 to get a younger woman than a woman who's 50, 60 to get a younger man unless you have money. Or you, you look good. Yeah, unless unless you're a uh, Sofia Vergata, unless you're a uh, milf, a milf, you know who's who's you know what I'm saying like kind of like Madonna mm-hmm. type, which most of the time they're not. Most of the time they're gonna be looking for the husband yes. to provide something for them, and they're gonna be mad because now the husband is hanging around a 25 year old. Well, Kevin Costner and Christine Baumgartner have settled, or the judge, rather, has settled the... Yeah, the uh, judge settled it. The it child support. They didn't settle it. Yeah, the child support issue. And Kevin won. Which Kevin came out on top in and... Hell yeah! Usually the women win in this type of scenario. Hell yeah, Kevin, you're the one that made awesome movies. Feel the dreams? Come on, now, what movie did your wife make besides the tape or whatever? That was a joke. That was terrible. And he is going for uh, another victory in what is certainly going to be a long, long war. I want to dispute that a little bit. It's not that he's going for a victory. He is blocking her from trying to get more money. And I say, That's if, not, if he does block, if he's successful, it will be a victory. then it will be a victory. But he's not going for it. She started going for something right. that he's Just blocking. Like she started going for bigger child support, okay, and I he know. ended up winning. Because of your just, age, just, now you're into the grammar thing and everything. Just say okay, that I, I got you. It's okay. fine. Okay. Yes, uh, so the battle now is over attorney's fees, and Christine wants Kevin to pay for hers, which is not unheard of. That's- well, but here's what's unusual about it. There are attorney's fees that have not yet been incurred. So what she's saying is this. I want to challenge the spousal support limitation in the prenuptial agreement because I want spousal support. And um, her lawyers filed a document saying it will take about $855,000 to challenge that point. Um, There's gonna be a trial on it in a couple of months. Well, Kevin's lawyer, Laura Wasser, was just incredulous and said, (laughs) based on their fee, you're saying it's gonna take her lawyers more than 1,100 hours to figure out how to argue that the spousal support provision shouldn't be enforced. Now, we should say, Harvey, it's very common, it happens in every big case, that the wealthier of the spouses typically will be ordered to pay the attorney's fees of the less wealthy spouse. So there's nothing- Whatever. Again, I do believe in true love, blah, blah, blah. I was talking to you last night about it. I said, do you want me to say what you said on the phone last night? I said a lot of things. I was probably high. Um, about marriage and what you would... Do you want me to say that or should we keep that private? Uh, I mean, I, whatever I said, I probably feel so. What did I say? You said... I said... We were, I remember exactly where I was. I was driving down the block going to racetrack because I have that free coupon from Tyson's office to get a large <laughs> soda and get a Polar Pop. But I really wanted some Mountain Dew last night because I had some work to do and I needed caffeine. And I'm driving down the road and we had two conversations... One that was like 20 minutes, one that was 11 minutes. And the one that was 11 minutes, I asked you, do you ever see yourself getting married? And you said, I see myself having a kid before I get married. Dude, this is why. Because if you have the feeling or the crisis or the urge to be a dad, you can get out of that situation. Like You would never be a deadbeat dad, but you can get out of it without, I don't know how the child support works, but you, you have the child support and paying for the kid. But you don't have to pay for like the the alimony. I totally get it. It's really, it's really, I don't know how that works because I don't have any kids and I got a vasectomy. And I'm probably never going to have kids unless I meet some girl that's the woman of my dreams that I changed my mind on. But this is why millennials are having kids without marriage because we're seeing the boomers the fucked it up. And even the marriages, bro, that you hear about these fucking the ones that are like close to dying, the ones that are born in 1920. Because there was no 
the options back then. You met somebody and you're like, oh, let's get married and have kids. It's the boomer generation. It's after World War II. But now it's like so hard to live. Even the idea of like, so I had a, I've had three girlfriends. First one, the relationship was about six weeks, about three months. It was puppy love. And it was in 2016 and me and her actually made up and we smoked a doobie and we're good about four years ago. But she said some things about radio that made me remember why I dumped her. My second girlfriend dumped me and we were engaged and I proposed to her on the beach at um, St. Pete Beach. Man, I'm just having memories. Six years ago. Happiest moment of my life up to that point. I only spent a hundred bucks on the, on the engagement ring. We And me and her actually kind of like picked it out and whatever. And people were like, why didn't you spend more? <laughs> it didn't work out. So I'm glad I didn't spend more. Everybody, all the boomers have this idea. I've got to have fancy jewelry. You got to have this and that. If it's all about true love, me and my ex, I do believe I loved her, but she, I'm pretty sure she loved me at some point. We had that. That relationship was worth a hundred bucks. All these idiots out there. I want to play you something real quick. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. Balia from our promotions team shared something last night that I was fascinated by. She shared this video. Thank God she showed up. I was really uh, stalling this. This is a dude being interviewed about um, an engagement ring. And I'm telling you right now, I found this absolutely fascinating. You ready? You ready for this? I'm ready. So look at the couple real quick. She's got like fake boobs and whatever, and he's probably comes from money, like a trust fund baby. This guy is sending men back a thousand years. How long have you been together? Four and a half years. No, five now. Well, yeah, I guess five now. Five years. Yeah. How much did you spend on our wedding ring? I mean, show it. I mean, go ahead. It, it, it's a decent amount. So if you look up like a three carat diamond, it's a decent amount I spent on her. But she deserves even more. Numbers wise, what are we talking? I mean, how much was it? 35K? 35K, yeah. 35,000 bucks. So he spent that much on a wedding ring for you as a gesture. What does he get in return? I think I should answer that. <laughs> so I, I, I get a partner that's loyal. In that laugh, she's implying that she cheats. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys should definitely see her face. The, the man right here. And, and I hope this is not um, staged, you know, because it's like, it's like. I don't, I don't think it is. Because this guy has been going viral with like the craziest clips of men and women, like just saying the most craziest shit. But the way she looks at him, at the husband, um, it's just hilarious. I, I really hope we put the link up as well for this video because you guys have to see it for yourself. So I, I get a partner that's loyal. I get the... That's him like saying, please don't cheat on me. When you are saying that's a partner that's loyal, he's telling her, I spent all this money on you, so you better not cheat on me. Like, obviously, I want a loyal ride or die wife as well someday. But if that's the first thing you're saying, that's because you're scared because you're realizing I spent too much money. Dummy. I mean, come on now. I mean, come on now. I think I should answer that. <laughs> so I, I, I get a partner that's loyal. I get the mother of my children. I get the most beautiful woman that I've ever, you know, been around. And the most fakest looking body ever. Most beautiful woman. She looks like any girl in Miami. And the most important thing is how she treats me and how she treats my family and how she treats her family. So for me, I have a partner for life and it's worth every investment there is. Okay. But a lot of people would say you could have the same thing without dropping 35K in a ring. You, you could. And, and money's not an issue. Like, if you can get a cheap ring and it's the person that's for you, whatever. But it also depends on how much you make. So... What a dork. He's going to, he probably gets cheated on. I bet she was laying in bed with her sneaky link and was like, he's a dummy.
Yeah, he, he. I don't know. He seems like he's definitely getting dogged out in Miami. Uh, she seemed like she had no respect for him. Yeah, her look on her face. She's a baddie, so I know. I know for for a fact she could have real ballers that really want to spend more than thirty five k on the ring. But it's like if you're thinking like that, and if you think a woman like that is kept by money, then you already lost the battle. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. We 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 definitely took an L with that. With that, that was right the there. most embarrassing thing I've ever ever seen. If and he was I my love, friend, if, I love Balia on our promotions team because she shared it and goes, "This is embarrassing." So she's even got common sense. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Like uh, us men, definitely took an L on that one. And if if he was my friend, oh, I have to edit that out. Eight five six forty nine happy. It's eight five six four nine four four. I don't even know the number anymore. Six seven seven three. Pharaoh said a bad word. Oh, wait, we can't say that. Come on now. Come on now. Say sorry. I'm sorry, guys. All right, good. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. I don't mind country music, but I'm telling you, I feel like the country music stars that turn up, I feel like they're annoying to be around. Like, I don't get a good vibe from any of them. Like, I feel like I could hang out with someone like Plies, and it'd be, I know it's, but he's a, he's a kind of a Fort Myers Tampa guy. I feel like he'd be fun to drink with, but I feel like some of these, like, uh, country music guys, they're like dorks. Yeah, I mean, it's just because we probably feel more comfortable uh, with, the, with the genre. You know, everybody knows hip hop, everybody's turning up, drinking, you know, that type of vibe. But uh, what are we, uh, what are we digging in? So I want to start by saying, I have to deal with the legalities of it. I did go to jail. Um, I didn't play favorites, and um, I was an idiot today. Zach Bryan is speaking out after his recent run-in with the law. The country singer is breaking his silence after he was arrested in Oklahoma on September 7th. Zach was taken into police custody in Venita, Oklahoma, located northeast of Tulsa on September 7th for obstruction of investigation, according to NBC affiliate KJRH. The 27-year-old bonded out of the Craig County Jail per the outlet, nearly an hour and a half after being booked. Shortly after the incident, Zach issues an apology on social media. He writes on X, formerly known as Twitter, quote, Today I had an incident with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. Emotions got the best of me, and I was out of line in the things I said. I support law enforcement as much as anyone can. I was just frustrated. He continues, In the moment, it was unlike me, and I apologize. I hate when people mess up when they're drunk and they say, uh, like, that wasn't me. To me, when you are drunk, that is when you are the most like yourself. I truly believe when you are drunk, that is, like, the side that is accurate. I mean, you're definitely a little bit more open and a little bit more vulnerable in those moments. Um, But, you know, sometimes we do have to agree you do things out of the, 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 the timing, you know, like, Let's just say you're extra trashed. You see some women. You want to say some crazy things to them. That might be the real side of you. But when you're sober, you actually have some common sense. So tomorrow, we're doing a show tomorrow, right? We are. We'll be back. So I have, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. I have 12 headlines, and there's going to be more tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is save all of these because right now it's 5.53 p.m., and we got to go to our promotions meeting, and I just don't want to be late. So let me see how long we've recorded this show without a commercial break. 49 minutes. I used to do that amount of talking in a row at 1025 The Bone. Um, promote yourself. Where can people find you? Listen, you guys can find me at YNG Pharaoh. That is my Instagram. And you can find me at YNG Pharaoh on X, previously known as Twitter. I'm always there talking smack and, of course, giving you good quotes, good energy, and just pretty much sharing my thoughts about life and my day. At Ryan Hoppy Radio on all social media. All the info is at RyanHoppyRadio.com. All right. We will be back tomorrow. And to all the people that are listening on the syndication on Big Mama Radio, again, thanks to Big Mama Radio for airing this show. We really appreciate it. 
We will be back soon. Spread the word. Happy hour. Happy hour.